Hi, I am Namit Sreka. I'm the Chief Analytics and AI Officer here at Stripe. Been in the industry for a little over 20 years now. And during that time, I have worked across many industries, helping them transform and adopt various new and digital technologies. As we all know, digital transformation has been an overused word, but it keeps evolving. Whether it's using data, it's AI, it's tech, to me, it's all about change. It's all about adapting new technologies and new innovation to doing the same things you've been doing, but do it better, faster, and cheaper. Now, as we know, 20 years back, there was a dot-com. Then there came all the mobile transformations. And then there has been almost a different digital transformation every two to three years. But each time, I would say the technology was focused on transforming a particular part of what we were doing. I feel Gen AI is much more pervasive and it is much more widespread and deep. There's a key difference between past transformations and this transformation, in my opinion. Historically, when these type of transformations have come in, they have always relied on technology people to enable and give solutions to the end user to improve their lives. With Gen AI, what we're seeing is what I call citizen AI. Here, the automation, the implications of AI, the application of AI is not dependent on some CTO or some CIO or some one individual or a set of individuals which are in a part of the organization. But what we are seeing, it is much more pervasive. And that makes it very, very exciting. To give you a real example, here at Strive, we have enabled our entire 15,000 plus professionals to be able to use any kind of Gen AI technology through what we call the LLM Foundry. There, they have the ability to use different models that they want to adapt to, solve different types of problems and use cases. Why is this important? This becomes very important because today, innovation is not being done in a room or in a particular segment of the organization. It is pervasive. We have people who have been doing the same job for the last 10 years, 15 years, experimenting with Gen AI and figuring out how they can improve what they're doing. Now, it does not stop here because while it is good to have citizen AI, we all know we also need scale and productionalized AI. So while this is very good for experimentation and identification of use cases that can be then further leveraged to enhance our operational efficiency and improve the outcomes for our clients, at the same time, we are cognizant that for real impact, we have to scale this and be able to productionalize this. So we have to almost think of two buckets. One is the use case bucket, where you're not dependent on people, you're not in a line to figure out whether you have something that can be operationalized or improved using Gen AI or not. That is what I call quote unquote citizen AI. Some organizations are using chat GPT. We have a much more sophisticated way of approaching that and we have implemented it in the form of LM Foundry. Then comes, how do I take the learnings from these quote unquote citizen AI initiatives and implement it enterprise wide to make it even more pervasive and give the ownership to the end user. And that is where we are now deploying large-scale production use cases to actually improve a lot of projects and engagements we are doing with our clients. Actually, that's a very good follow-up question to the previous one. Uh, and I think that's also a differentiation of how Gen AI is going to be used. Historically, if you think of any kind of you know AI or any kind of predictive technology, we were trying to build regression models, we were trying to do point estimates. Uh, all of them being probabilistic, but still we're trying to get to a deterministic outcome, come to a point outcomes. If you think of Gen AI, there is no deterministic outcome as such, right? It's about the quality of the outcome. Is this summary better or is that summary better? And you need experts in loop, you need humans in loop to figure out which particular example is better than the other. And if you see for most Gen AI use cases we're implementing, you're starting at 50%, 60% accuracy. And the only way to improve it and continuously keep improving it is through human in the loop. So ultimately, I see it as being a beautiful combination of human in loop with AI in loop. Now, we don't know whether it's the human in loop or the AI in loop, but they have to work in tandem to create the best outcomes. And that is where we are seeing the best improvements on a process that we've been running for 10 years uh, whether it is in customer experience, whether it is in content extraction, whether it is converting structured data, unstructured data into structured data. Each of the use cases, we are seeing significant benefits by having a constant human uh, intervening and improving 
what Gen AI is predicting. And that is where I think some of the modeling and implementation of Gen AI actually differentiate itself and productionization become very important because that is your only way of improving the model. If you rely on citizen AI, you'll end up relying on out of the box models and whatever outcome you get is what you get. There is no opportunity to improve. We are also experimenting and spending a lot of time and energy in research in this area. For example, recently we have done a direct process optimization or DPO, where we are getting a lot of benefit by fine tuning the model. And in some cases, we are actually able to fine tune these models with very, very limited data. Even in cases, 100 observations have been seen to be good enough. In the similar context, I think synthetic data is also becoming very important. In fact, there are places where we are creating synthetic data to you know, account for fraud or account for corner areas, which you know, kind of the historical models miss out. So we are using synthetic data to create these examples and then reuse it to further uh, fine tune the Gen AI model. So again, a lot of use cases, we are seeing widespread uh, usage from operations to fraud to risk to customer experience. And I think productionizing at scale will be the differentiator for large enterprises to drive value out of this. As with all technologies, I would say it's a mix of both. Uh, but I would say I see more excitement than apprehensiveness. And I would say there's excitement in testing out new things. Everybody knows that the ground under us is changing. And that has awakened everyone to be experimenting with it, to be using it in their own way. Uh, and as I said, from a spectrum of citizen AI to productionized AI, people are in different uh, stages of solving for this and identifying what can be done. One key difference I would say to highlight here is, in a lot of cases, unlike other technologies for Gen AI, the POC is very easy to execute. And that, I think, is creating a lot of excitement. Where the apprehension comes is when you try to scale those POCs or proof of concepts, people are hitting walls. And that is becoming a big challenge for enterprises to overcome. Now, whether that is a use case problem, whether that's an enterprise technology problem, or whether it's an adoption and change management problem, there are various flavors to that wall that one will hit, but I am very confident with the direction and the results we're seeing on the ground that this will kind of keep improving itself. And I would say excitement will create more excitement and with more successful use cases, uh, apprehension will be significantly lower going forward. It's a beautiful question. Let's start with the name, Strive. How do you spell Strive? S-T-R-I-V-E. But that's not the company we are. We are Strive. S-T-R-A-I-V-E. What does that mean? AI is at the center of everything we do. And this is not the last 12 month chat GPT phenomenon. We have been strive for a very long time. AI has always been at the center of everything we do. And I will tell you, a lot of enterprises think of it as lip service. In fact, 10 years back, our employees thought the same, that when strive is embarking on this AI journey, it is more of a lip service than anything else. I told you a few minutes back, we have each and every employee at Strive, which is 15,000 plus employees. They have access to what I call the LLM Foundry. That LLM Foundry has more than 10 LLM models that people can play with. There is a full experimentation bed case where they can obviously subject to client constraints and confidentiality constraints. They can experiment with any kind of technology, any kind of model and see what is the benefit they are getting. I have people doing it on customer experience, I have people doing it in operations, I have people doing it in education, and I have people doing it in their own minds. So I feel, and this is not me, in fact, I have been kind of traveling over the last few weeks, everybody, everywhere I go, they are saying the access we have is way more than any of their peers, any of their friends have. And to me, that's a big endorsement of Strive, not just doing lip service to AI, but providing real valuable tools for people to adapt, change, learn and progress in their careers. Don't get fooled by the outcomes of the POCs. They can be difficult, they can be good, they can be bad. One has to believe a problem worth solving and if, if an LLM expert is telling you it can be solved, it is worth investing time and energy to explore the solution. Experiment, experiment and experiment. Uh, do not be dissuaded 
by things that don't work out uh, because not everything will but when you experiment and learn there are two benefits of that first obviously you are validating whether that particular use case can be solved or not which is okay some use cases will solve themselves some won't and which is perfectly fine to me the bigger and the much bigger cultural change is the fact that people are willing to experiment and see what they have been doing for years and decades can we do done better can it be done cheaper can it be done faster so i think let's take a step back right we are trying to in my opinion regulate and over regulate a technology that is not even 12 months old we do not know what exists today it is very hard for us to know what the form of this will be one year from now there have been billions and billions of dollars that have been fed into the ai journey across enterprises across venture capitals across the startup ecosystem with very little revenue and immediate outcome so we have to understand this is not a 5 year old technology this is not a 10 year old technology where we understand the ins and outs this is a very nascent technology and while we are using it each one of us have to be taking this subjective call in our mind is this the right use is this a problem that is worth solving is it something that is worth using genai for and we have to be very careful what kind of things we are using are we using personal data are we using proprietary data are we impacting someone's lives we have to be very very careful about answering these questions in a very objective way and only when we are comfortable that yes i would be comfortable if somebody was using this data from my part of life to solve my problem in this way should we be using it for others so as they say don't do to others what you won't do to yourself so i think that's a basic principle to start off with but i know there's a lot of philosophy uh, governments across the world are kind of conceptualizing frameworks uh, at strive we have implemented our own responsible ai framework and policy which is available again signed off by all the employees and we are very very strongly behind protecting privacy and using ai and implementing end to end responsible ai framework